your opening statement and Chairman Nadler's opening statements were really the best part of yesterday, so congratulations on that. And after the hearings, you tweeted this out. Here's what Mueller said. Russia interfered in our election to help Trump. Russians made numerous contacts with the campaign. Campaign welcomed their help. No one reported these contacts or interference to FBI. They lied to cover it up. So what's your party going to do about that? What are you going to do with this information? Well, what we wanted to try to accomplish yesterday was to get these facts out before the American people. Uh, since most people don't have the opportunity to read that lengthy report, and they had it filtered instead by the likes of Bill Barr, who misrepresented what it had to say, and Donald Trump, who continues, as you point out, to misrepresent uh, Bob Mueller's work. Uh, so that was at least my objective, was to help get the facts out uh, and also find out what didn't Mueller investigate. Uh, what do we still need to do to protect the country? Uh, and it was clear to me anyway yesterday he did not follow the money. So someone needs to do the investigation into money laundering. Were the Russians laundering money through the Trump businesses? Is that leverage they possess over this president? Is but that who's, why? Who's going to do that investigation? Is it going to well, be your committee? Or, I mean, what, what do you do about yes. it now? So, I mean, you've got... You can impeach, you can have further investigations, or um, we can try to vote the guy out. What, yeah. what are we as Americans going to do with this information? Well, what we're doing uh, in the Intelligence Committee is we are following the money. Uh, we're investigating that issue of money laundering uh, potentially by the Russians through Trump businesses. We're doing that along with the Financial Services Committee. Uh, we're investigating uh, whether the Gulf countries use their economic leverage to influence U.S. policy. We're investigating whether people who are in the administration now have security clearances when they should have been rejected. People who tried to set up secret back channels through Russian diplomatic facilities like Jared Kushner. Uh, so we are doing the investigations and as you know we're having a vigorous debate about whether we need to go beyond investigation to impeachment uh, and if so when that should be done. Uh, so we are uh, affirmatively working on all these issues. From the Intel Committee perspective, it's all about protecting the country. Uh, Congressman Schiff, first of all, it's joy. I want to tell you, I thought you were just fantastic yesterday. A Thank statesman you. par excellence. So doing what you did, and thank you for coming on the show today. And you said that following the money wasn't just a moral issue. It was a national safety issue. I thought that was an interesting comment. Why do you say that? Can you elaborate? Well, you know, if you look at uh, the president's effort during the campaign to make millions, hundreds of millions, according to the special counsel, from this Trump Tower in Moscow while conceiving it for, uh, concealing it from the American people, uh, reaching out to the Kremlin, having phone calls with the Kremlin, emails with the Kremlin. Uh, Michael Cohen uh, said that he felt, and he was convinced the president did too, that without Putin's approval, they were never going to get this project done. If this president still wants to build that tower, that compromises us if that's why he can't confront Putin. Uh, and indeed, when it was exposed, all the lies about Trump Tower were exposed, and Donald Trump was asked about it, he said, well, that's not a crime. I can essentially lie to the American people about it, conceal it. That's not a crime. Uh, and more than that, why should I miss out on those opportunities? Why should I miss out on all that money? Uh, if that is still his attitude today, then the campaign was not only the greatest infomercial in history, but the very presidency is a continuation of that infomercial. Congressman, this is Megan McCain. Um, you have claimed for years now that you have a smoking gun of evidence of collusion. Your quote is ample evidence of collusion. You said that. But Robert Mueller and his investigation found that there was no collusion. So can you share with us right here, right now, on The View, the evidence that you have and explain why Mueller was wrong yesterday? Well, first of all, Mueller wasn't wrong. Uh, Mueller started out by saying we didn't address the issue of collusion. So those who are saying no collusion, well, what's your they're evidence? just wrong. You've been saying that on well, TV yes. for years. Well, I will tell you, and we, and I've also been saying, as you know, that the evidence is in plain sight, not hidden anywhere. And we went through that evidence. The Russians offered dirt on Hillary Clinton in writing. Uh, and sent it to Don Jr. And Don Jr.'s response was in writing and said, as for your offer of foreign illegal help, I would love it. He accepted the offer. They set up a overt act in furtherance of that, the secret meeting at Trump Tower, and they lied about it. You have an offer of illegal help. You have the acceptance of that offer. You have an overt, overt act in furtherance of that conspiracy. That is, I think, by any rational American's expectation, the, the personification of collusion. Now, Bob Mueller had a different question he needed to analyze, which is, 
Can I prove each of the elements of the crime of conspiracy beyond a reasonable doubt? And as you know, well before the Mueller report, I was pointing out to the public, there's a difference between what we understand as collusion and whether you can prove all the elements of crime. So would you consider uh, yesterday a big win for yesterday. Democrats? Would you consider yesterday a big win for Democrats? Uh, you know, I would consider it a win for the American people that right. they got to hear from the person who did the investigation. They got to hear unfiltered by anybody else what he found. Uh, you know, for the former director of the FBI and the special counsel to say, effectively, the president acted immorally, unethically, unpatriotically, uh, and likely in a criminal fashion, uh, the American people needed to hear. Um, if you're measuring whether this is success in terms of whether it brings us closer to impeachment or not, that was not my object with uh, wanting him to come in. My object was to find out what work did you do, what conclusions did you reach, and what work do we need to do to follow up on counterintelligence or compromise information to protect the country. Chairman, has it brought you closer to an impeachment inquiry? I don't know. Um, because the facts that he testified were not new, they were from the report as we expected they would be, um, I was, I think, very circumspect about what we would hope to get from the hearing uh, on that issue. I tried an impeachment case in the Senate 10 years ago against a corrupt federal judge, and we convicted him. And I have a good idea, I think, about what it takes to get a conviction uh, in the Senate. And I'm not the least bit sanguine about that. But the jury that I care the most about is the jury of the American people and what message a, an impeachment that results in an acquittal in the Senate will leave for the future generations about this president's conduct. But, but is that and that's the right question to ask? Can I ask you, is that the right um, question to ask? Because you just, you just went through the elements and the facts that, that we know that prove what you said was you know, the, the perfect case for collusion. So if we've got those facts, if we've got that information, how do you justify to the American people not following up with an impeachment inquiry? Well, the, the Constitution provides impeachment as a remedy. It doesn't compel Congress to act and impeach whenever there are grounds for impeachment. Uh, and I think we have to consider what will an impeachment and an acquittal in the Senate say about whether this president's conduct uh, is compatible with office uh, if the president can later make the claim, having been acquitted, that this is not impeachable conduct. Uh, so I do think about what message we are sending today, what message we're sending the country, and whether it makes sense to go down that road knowing what the result will be. Mm -hmm. I'm keeping an open mind, but I have yet to be fully persuaded. And before we take the country through what will probably be a year-long um, and, and uh, certainly very centrally focused effort by the Congress, I want to make sure that it's the right thing to do for the country. And, and may I add that he will present himself as a victim, and that may not play well. So the main well, thing is to get him out. Let me ask there's you, no question. Yeah, yes. Let me ask you this, because Mueller made it very clear that Russia meddled in our elections. The Republicans haven't done anything to fix it. M uh, McConnell doesn't want to be bothered. Let's be honest. They are really helped by it. They're the party that Russia wants in power. How do you fight that? How do we stop foreign governments from interfering in the future? I mean, they're doing it all over the world, apparently. Paper ballot. Well, I mean, this is, you know, one of the other uh, hopes of, of having Bob Mueller come in, which is to make the case uh, why we need to protect our elections uh, infrastructure, why we need to redouble our efforts, that the Russians have never stopped meddling and they're going to continue to meddle. Uh, and I think the reason why probably the most powerful moment in the hearing for me was when Mueller acknowledged that he's already worried that this is the new normal, that is, that American candidates are going to think it's okay to receive foreign assistance. Uh, and if we get to that point, then we are truly sunk. Uh, and of course, the one who's rationalizing, normalizing all this is the President of the United States. We can only partially control what the Russians do. We can control, though, what we do. And it's going to fall on the American people to say, you know, that's not okay here, and anyone who thinks it is well, needs to be voted out of office. Here's the thing, Congressman. It's up to you all. <laughs> it's, this, is, this is in your hands. Yeah. This is in all of your hands, both the Republicans and the Democrats. You are sitting with the power to make this change. If you allow people to continue to break the law, continue to flout the idea that because there's some sort of... Uh, many new thing that someone's written in and they have decided they're not going to come and do what any other American would have to do, then this is going to be on your backs because we can't do anything until y'all do something. So y'all need to do this. Yep. We